Welcome back, whiskey enthusiasts. This is Brett, and I've got a brand new bottle that I've never had before that I'm going to be checking out. Uh, totally untested for you today. This is Compass Box Story of the Spaniard. And this is, I will tell you quickly, aged 80% of the whiskey in this bottle was aged in Spanish wine casks. I'll tell you a little bit more about this after the tasting. Uh, also, I'll note that it is 43%, so it's rather low uh, in ABV. Let's see how that affects us. The first thing I notice on the nose is just a bowl full of ripe red fruits. There are plums and nectarines, some peach. There's a little bit of lemon and orange. Um, so the citrus note also. There's a tiny bit of raspberry. And underneath all that, I get maltiness and vanilla coming through. There's just a hint of nutmeg possibly cinnamon, but it's very faint, just enough to give it some depth. There's kind of a baked bread note in there that is related to the maltiness. All in all, this is a full, rich nose. Um, it's got a lot going for it. I can't find anything that I dislike about the nose. It's not too sweet, it's not too malty. Uh, there's no smoke evident in this at all. The more I stick with it, the more I uh, get some vanilla and caramel notes and more of that malt and less of the fruit, the more I've gotten used to the fruitiness. All in all, I would rate this nose very highly. Interesting. On the first taste, uh, the primary thing I got in the palate was not the fruit, it was the malt and that baked bread note. On the second sip, more of the Fruit comes through. It comes through as a raspberry and strawberry. Not nearly as dark on the fruits as it was on the nose. There's also some vanilla and some spice moves forward in the latter part of the palate. On the third taste, I get more into that plum, the darker fruits. Um, also get a little bit of that peach note. So the fruit comes back. Um, it's just not the initial thing that you get on the first sip. I will note that I haven't had anything else to drink prior to this today. So that first sip could have been a little deceiving as my palate got woken to the uh, alcohol. Now. As you move into the last part of the palate, uh, I do get a little bit of black pepper and maybe a little bit of clove. They're not strong, but they're present. Um, it never gets dry. Um, it stays rather rich and fruity, malty. There's no real drying note that you would sometimes expect with a lot of wine finish. So um, I would say probably that these are uh, sweeter wines that this was done with. Uh, rather than a dry red. Now let's look at the finish a little bit. It 
In the finish, I get a lingering strawberry note um, mixed with a darker plum. Probably not a black plum, more like a red plum. Um, that pepper and clove that I uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, again, the spice is not really strong. It's just kind of medium. Uh, there's a little bit of oakiness, but not a lot. This doesn't show a massive amount of age, but it does show a lot of depth. Um, the vanilla carries over into the finish and balances out the fruitiness. All in all, um, it's very fruit forward on the nose. Um, it's rather balanced on the palate and the finish is extraordinarily balanced and probably medium in length. Now I will tell you, um, for those that want to stick around, that I am not in general a huge fan of Compass Box. I find that many of their products are essentially um, tiny slight variations on the exact same thing. Uh, I don't have a problem with Kleinlish, but they use a massive amount of Kleinlish in their blends, and I just want something more in many cases. That said, especially for the price, I like this better than most Compass Box that I have tried, and I've tried at least nine or ten of them. Um, this is going to be in a price range somewhere between $55 and $65 generally. For the price, this is the best Compass Box out there, in my opinion. This is better than Oak Cross. It is better than Pete Monster. It is better than either of the great King Street uh, blends. It's uh, better than Asila, however you're supposed to pronounce that. I've never looked it up. Uh, it's better, in my mind, even than Hedonism. However, a lot of strict bourbon drinkers really like Hedonism because it is very grain forward and it's familiar for the bourbon drinkers. But for a Scotch drinker, I think this is the best uh, under $100 compass box that I've ever had. So my score on this would be, I would give the nose a 90. I would give the palate an 84, and I would give the nose, an, or uh, I'm sorry, the finish, an 85. Um, that will be the highest rating I've ever given to a compass box. That said, I haven't, uh, I haven't actually reviewed any of their very expensive ones because like I said, in general, they're not something that I get excited about. A little bit more about this uh, is that this was inspired by John Glazer going to New York and trying a whiskey called the Spaniard. And he decided to create a blend with that style in mind. They don't disclose, at least not on the bottle or in public literature, exactly what casks were used. They just say that they were Spanish wine casks. I would say that there's at least four different kinds of wine casks used in this. I would also say that they were largely, as I said before, uh, a fruitier wine, a sweeter wine, rather than a dry wine. Um, there is 20% of the blend that is not done in wine cask. We can assume that means that they were done in bourbon casks. And so that's where you get some of those vanilla notes coming through and some of the cinnamon and spice probably. All in all, I think this was well done. I'm very happy with it. This is the only bottle of Compass Box I've ever bought that I would actually keep it on my shelf permanently and buy it again and keep it there as a, uh, as a standard offering. Um, this far exceeds most blends, especially in this price range. So there you have it, uh, an unusually high praise from me for a compass box, but I really do like this one. It excites me. There you have it, uh, regardless of your tastes and whether you like this one or whether you like something different, go out and find a whiskey you'll love.